Fabian, governors, uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for uh, inviting me this evening. Uh, and it's my huge honor to represent His Majesty's government uh, at this reception. Um, thank you for your kind remarks uh, on the passing of Her Majesty the Queen. I think everybody was struck by the way that countries around the world showed their grief. But as you say, Fabian, nowhere more so was that visible than in the overseas territories and in places like Gibraltar. And Gibraltar does patriotism in the most wonderful way. Uh, on my visits there, I've always been struck by how easily people can show their pride in the ancient institution of the monarchy, freely offered in a way that you don't get, I think, here. Um, and yet, they don't do it with nostalgia, they do it because it just means something to them, and I, I always think that that is hugely impressive. Now, um, sadly, uh, there were no foreign office ministers uh, available this evening, so they gave me some foreign office business to discuss around e EU negotiations. <laughs> And they reminded me, Fabian, that you are quite a sharp lawyer, and therefore I should be very precise in my language around the EU negotiations for fear that I set hairs running that are back in King Charles Street before, uh, before I get back to Whitehall later on. Thank you but you, <laughs> but you, you summed up that progress very well, actually. The reality is, is that good progress is being made on something that is very complex. But the thing that there can be no compromise on, and there will be no compromise on, and within the MOD, we stand with you in making sure there is no compromise on it, is your sovereignty. Um, because the, the bases in Gibraltar are of huge strategic importance, not just to the United Kingdom, but to Europe as a whole. You made the point, Fabian, about the geography that you occupy and how accessible that is, uh, or, or how easily that allows us to access not just the Mediterranean and Europe, but also on into Africa and into the Mid-Atlantic. Um, the You said to me when I came last, you lamented that uh, you weren't seeing enough of the Royal Navy, and you were showing me plans, I suspect, deliberately designed to agitate for huge amounts of land reclamation from the harbour, uh, which would make it rather hard to put as many warships into the dock yard as we would like. And I said, well, Fabian, well, how can we stop you from doing this? And you say, well, look, we Gibraltarians are a patriotic lot, and we love to see the white ensign flying in Gibraltar. So if you use it, you won't lose it. Well, Fabian, uh, I took that to heart, and I went home and I said, the chief minister assures me that if he sees the white ensign regularly, uh, we will have no further uh, threats to uh, the, 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 the naval facility. Uh, and since that visit in September 2020, 20 Royal Navy ships have made a total of 72 visits. Six RFA, there we go, yeah. Uh, six Royal Fleet Auxiliary vessels have made 20 further visits. HMS Trent is now permanently uh, home ported in Gibraltar and the ship's company are hugely grateful that the, to the, for the hospitality and the welcome that you have shown to what is now your resident warship. Uh, HMS Trent projects UK hard power into the Mediterranean and round into the Gulf of Guinea, uh, and she is proving herself to be a hugely capable platform, and we're delighted that she's now based with you. And we will continue to make sure that as ships are transiting from the UK into the Mediterranean and beyond, Gibraltar becomes the default stop that all Royal Navy ships have made for centuries. And long may that continue because they have a great run ashore and you like to see them. And of course, we need to keep sending them for fear that you'll pour lots more earth into the <laughs> harbour and they won't be able to come anymore. Um, now, the dockyard is... Uh, is hugely strategically important and large. And it was great to see that Steve uh, is here because uh, Steve has become a staple of, uh, of my stories about Gibraltar over the last few years. Because when I stayed at his home uh, two years ago, he explained to me that as a retiring frigate captain, or as a frigate captain on his last journey home with his frigate, was it Campbelltown? Cumberland. 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 He decided he would try to set the record for how fast a frigate could 
get to uh, before it reaches the knoll and exits the harbour. So having slipped his berth, he reversed all the way back up, as far up the harbour as he could get, and then put the throttle full forward uh, in order to get to, is it 26 knots? 28 knots uh, before leaving Gibraltar Harbour, uh, to be met by a very agitated flotilla commander on his return to Portsmouth to find that he uh, had attracted the ire of the then governor and was to be banned from ever returning to Gibraltar, uh, which the MOD responded to by making you commander British forces there. Uh, and, uh, uh, but... The, the dockyard is hugely important, uh, the garrison is hugely important, the airfield is hugely important. When I went to visit our troops uh, in Mali, and uh, it was sufficiently recently after their most re one, of their, one of their coups, uh, we couldn't take civilian aircraft, so we flew down to Gibraltar and then on from Gibraltar uh, to Mali. The air crew decided that they would show me just how quickly you could stop a C-17, and the challenge they set themselves was to have it fully to a standstill by the time they reached the road, uh, which was effectively an audition for landing a C-17 on an aircraft carrier. Um, but, they, uh, but they did it, uh, and my lunch stayed inside me. Um, but what you realise from RAF Gibraltar is that every bit as important as the dockyard is, so too is that airbase. And in recent months, when Russian submarines have been doing what Russian submarines do, it's amazing how many times Gibraltar, as an option for the positioning of maritime reconnaissance aircraft, has come up. And it just goes to show how valuable Gibraltar is to the Western Mediterranean, the Mid-Atlantic, mid as Cyprus is to the Eastern Mediterranean. Um, and then, finally, it is inescapably a very strategic piece of ge geography. The Gibraltar Straits are uh, a bottleneck through which a huge amount of commercial traffic passes and thus must be secured from uh, countries that have malign intent. But so too is an important place from which we can monitor the movements of our competitors and adversaries. Now look, none of that should stop Gibraltarians choosing their own path. But I know, Fabian, as you tell every visiting defence minister, that Gibraltarians are hugely proud of the relationship that you have with the Ministry of Defence and the UK Armed Forces. So for all of the complexity of the EU deal, I am absolutely confident that we will end up in a place where Gibraltar and the UK can continue to have the defence relationship that is in our mutual interests and that you can continue to be a much-valued part of the United Kingdom family. Thank you all very much indeed.